Welcome back. The next condition control technique is traffic throttling. So in the internet and all, as far as the sending host is concerned, they will be try to send the maximum traffic the network can handle. And the sender is not at all bothered about whether there will be congestion in the network and all, right? So now it's the duty of the routers inside the network to act before any congestion. So when the congestion is about to happen, the sender should be given a warning to slow down its transmission. So the routers must determine when the congestion is approaching, right? Ideal case, definitely the, uh, they should be able to understand that uh, the congestion is about to happen. Definitely before arriving or before the congestion is happening, it should be able to realize that. And it should be able to warn the corresponding sender who is uh, making this congestion. Now the question is how a router can understand that the congestion is approaching. For this, each router will continuously monitor the resources it is using. Resources in the sense it can be output lines, what is the utilization of output links and uh, buffering of queued packets inside the router and number of packets that are lost due to insufficient buffering. So among it's the second one is the most useful one okay? because the first one that is utilization of output links uh, which will not give a measure of the congestion right because the congestion may be due to some bursty traffic where the average traffic has nothing to do with it right. And the third one, number of packets that are lost due to insufficient buffering. If packets are lost means uh, already there is congestion. It's not a warning, real indication that the congestion occurred. The second one is taken as actually a warning, right? If there is a long queue of packets in the buffer, there is a possibility of uh, congestion in the near future. So if the router is able to predict or estimate the queuing delay in the nearest future, it can understand that yeah, something is going to happen, some congestion is going to happen, right? So how the router can estimate this uh, queuing delay in the nearest future? For that it uses a technique estimate of the queuing delay by using this exponentially weighted moving average. Okay, usually we are seeing such a weighted average in different contexts and uh, you can see here that the estimate of this queuing delay in the nearest future is equal to some weight alpha into the previous history okay just uh, estimated one in the previous time plus one minus alpha into s so what the router will do is it will take an instantaneous sample of q length the current value of q length that is s and it will predict the nearest future q, uh, q in delay using this equation so the value of alpha decides uh, how much importance should be given to the previous history and the current q length okay so d is the estimate of the q in delay and S is the sample of the instantaneous Q length, the current value of the Q length and uh, alpha determines how fast the router forgets the recent history. If the value of alpha is too small, that uh, should definitely should be between 0 and 1, right? So it, if we are taking 0.5 as alpha, we are giving equal weight to the previous history of this uh, queuing delay and the current value of the Q length. Okay. Using this equation, it can predict what can be the Q length in the nearest future. So, and whenever D moves above some threshold value, the router will understand that the congestion is going to happen. Now using this method, router understood that congestion is going to happen. Now what's the next step? Yeah, it should inform the corresponding centers who are creating this congestion, right? There some warning should be given to them to slow down their uh, transmission. That is the next step. So some feedback should be given to the corresponding centers. So how uh, these uh, senders are identified actually? Yeah, that is uh, straightforward, right? The corresponding packets will be there in the queue of this router and by picking some packets from this queue and taking the corresponding, checking the corresponding sender's address, it can identify who is the sender of these packets and corresponding sender should be informed. So these are the three different methods to give a feedback by this router to the corresponding sender. Chalk packets explicit congestion notification and the third one is hop by hop back page. we will see one by one first one is chalk packets definitely the most direct way to notify sender is to tell it directly right yeah that is done by the stock packet so what happens here is uh, router select a congested packet from its queue find the sender address it will send the chalk packet back to the source host giving it the destination found in the packet so the original packet will contain the destination address also right that also will be copied into the chalk packet Okay, so what upon receiving this stock packet, what the, what the sender will understand that to this particular destination, there is congestion in the network. So I have to slow down the transmission. Okay, so when the source host gets the stock packet, it is required to reduce the traffic sent to the specified destination by X percentage, maybe 50 percentage. I have to reduce it by 50 percentage. The router will do one more thing that the original packet will be tagged. Okay, some bit will be set in this header to indicate that chalk packet is already sent to the sender 
otherwise what will happen suppose this is a sender machine and this is a receiver machine and suppose this is a router which identify the congestion so there's a queue in this uh, router and taking a packet from this queue it will uh, find out uh, yeah uh, a is a sender for that packet so it will send a chalk packet to this a mentioning that route to d is congested you have to slow down your transmission so that is the meaning of this and uh, the original packet the original actual data packet will be tagged okay that means uh, the same packet will be reached here also after some time right maybe this way also be congested what happens if it is not tagged again this router also will send a chalk packet to a right any all the routers on the way will send a chalk packet and this chalk packets itself create a congestion to avoid such a congestion tagging is used another issue with this chalk packet method let me explain with this example suppose this is a router which identify that some congestion will happen after some time so what it will do it will uh, pick some packets randomly from its queue right and it will identify the sender of those uh, packets suppose uh, a is a sender for all those packets because uh, a is a fast sender so many packets will be generated by a so different uh, routers may queue this packets from a right what happens all those uh, packets a chalk packet will be generated that will reach a right suppose the first chalk packet received by a a will slow down its transmission by 50 percentage after some time again another chalk packet from either the same router or from some other router will reach a continuously the sender will receive chalk packet from uh, different routers or the same router asking to slow down the transmission to the same destination right so this issue is handled by taking a policy that uh, after receiving a chalk packet from a particular destination this uh, sender will not listen for any chalk packet for a time interval fix a time interval okay and after that uh, interval if it again receives some chalk packet for the same destination it will further reduce so that is the policy taken here of course this chalk packet method gives a timely response so timely feedback right because the feedback is directly from the router which identified the congestion to the sender who created the congestion right so it uh, it's a quick response so definitely a good one but the problem here is that it creates a lot of chalk packets right so the same router may identify different packets from the queue and uh, will send chalk packets for all those packets centers right maybe the same sender because uh, always the fast sender creates uh, much more congestion right so a lot of packets from the same sender may be queued in the same router and for all those packets this uh, router may send chalk packets so the same to the same sender there can be a lot of chalk packets and there can be different senders who create the congestion right and different routers may identify those senders and all those uh, routers will create chalk packets and this chalk packet itself creates a lot of congestion right so that's the problem with the chalk packet method so we have to go for some other method also next method is explicit congestion notification in this method instead of generating additional chalk packet to warn of congestion a router will just tag any packet it forwards okay tagging is done by a special bit in the header of that packet okay and that bit indicates that it is experiencing some congestion so when the network delivers the packet to the destination destination notes that there is some congestion along the path and inform the sender in its reply back okay definitely this uh, destination will uh, send some acknowledgement or some data return back to the sender right uh, in the header of that packet this uh, bit will be copied okay so and upon receiving this data frame or data packet from the uh, destination sender will slow down the corresponding transmission so you can see here that this is a sender machine this is a receiver machine and inside this router it experiences a congestion and that information is marked on this uh, packet and upon receiving that packet by the destination host it will reply back to the sender and in that reply the corresponding congestion information is uh, marked okay and upon receiving this uh, this uh, host will slow down the corresponding transmission here we can say that there is no additional congestion created by this congestion signal right because the signal is carried by the data packet itself but the problem here is that the signal is uh, from the destination machine to uh, source machine right so the task is not straightforward there, there is a very big subnet in between the sender and the receiver right so that much delay will be experienced by this signal by that time if there is a high the speed of the network is high or the uh, distance from the source to destination is very long what happens by that time lot many other packets also will, also will be sent by the sender right so response is very slow in the case of uh, explicit congestion notification method and the next method is hop by hop back pressure which is also a chalk packet approach okay so we are using chalk packets to signal the congestion and uh, the method here is to have the chalk packet take effect at every hop it passes through 
we can see an example here so you can see here two different diagrams first one a chalk packet that affects only the source machine and the second diagram a chalk packet that affects each hope it passes through we can see the difference okay so let us take this as a subnet this is a subnet in which there is a heavy flow of traffic from the router a through e f to d and d detects that there can be a congestion after some time so i should warn the sender machine a so it will send a chalk packet it is received by the router f so there is no effect on the sender machine okay and later it the chalk packet is received by the uh, router e then also there is no effect on a right and finally the chalk packet is received by a so this uh, a will reduce the traffic and the reduced effect will be received by e only till there is heavy flow in this uh, d right and uh, later that effect will be get by this f so there is a re relief in the congestion in the f right and finally this uh, effect will be received by d also so this much time is taken by this ndr network to reduce the traffic right so by that time lot of uh, um, congestion already happened lot of factors will be lost and all so how can we reduce this response time okay for that we are using the second approach that is hope by hope back pressure in this case you can see here that the same network we are taking as an example there's a heavy flow from a to d and d send a chalk packet and uh, upon receiving the chalk packet by f f will reduce the flow okay f will reduce the flow to d so immediate effect is received by d still there is a heavy flow from e to f so definitely this f should be accompanied by a very good buffer capacity and this chalk packet is sent back to e upon receiving this uh, chalk packet e will reduce the traffic to f okay so definitely still there is a heavy flow from a to e right so there's a uh, there should be a good capacity buffer here and finally when this chalk packet is received by a a also will reduce the corresponding flow the net effect of this uh, hope by hope scheme is to provide a quick relief at the point of congestion at the price of using up more buffers upstream